Welcome to the New Calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a method to determine the auxiliary equation and verify that indeed you can uh, find an mm pair for any function using the particular auxiliary equation. And so the way we'll do it is we'll start off with the following uh, by discussing how the new calculus derivative works. And so uh, there are still some PhDs and they're lucky bots. So should I bring your martini now? Oh, I'm sorry, I see you're recording. Yes, uh, never mind. Could you hold off a little bit? Of course. Thank you very much, that will be all. So uh, there are still some more on PhDs and their lackey bots who believe the new calculus does not work. And, and uh, just let me close this window, okay. And the definition of derivative in the new calculus, as you'll hopefully know by now, is f prime of x is equal to this expression here, plus, of course, the quotient or not the quotient, the uh, auxiliary expression, which is always evaluated to zero. And you can watch some of the previous videos over here to see how that's done. Now, um, let's use the definition to prove that the cos x, that cos x is a derivative of sine x, and more importantly, that infinitely many m, m pairs can be found in a tangent space. So I know I'm reading this to you right now, but uh, I think it's best that you actually follow along here and then I'll post this file up in the details section so that you can go over it in your own time. And incidentally, there are some professors who believe that the trigonometric ratios can take degrees, but that's false. Uh, the input to any trigonometric ratio is always a radian. Well, you may say, well, we've used degrees uh, as long as I can remember. Actually, when you use degrees, they're normally converted into radians before being passed along to the trigonometric functions. So in this, at this link here, you'll see an example of some professors who actually think that way, okay? So you can go there and check it out. But anyhow, back to the topic. So from the definition, we have this here, the the, de the derivative is actually equal to cos x, and rearranging with some algebra, we arrive at this equation here. And now you can simply use Newton's root approximation method with fn as this function and the partial derivative of fn, and then uh, calculate the corresponding n value for any uh, m value and x that you've been given. So. I've also produced a little, a sample little C program for you. And the way it works is in this line here, you will enter Fn and in this line here, the partial derivative of Fn and it will return the value of N. And to give you a demonstration, you can go to the free compiler online, which is onlinegdb.com and run it here. Okay, so here I'll tell you what I've done. I've chosen uh, an angle of pi over three and an initial value, let me just open this up a bit, for, for, uh, for n, which is 0 0.1, an initial value, and a value of m, which is 0 0.1, and I get 0 0.98109. And so <clears throat> if you had to go to, um, one of these applets that I've compiled. Let's just go over here, see if I can find it quickly. Um, nope, not that one, it's in here. All right, let's see where it is. I should have opened it up earlier, but I was kind of in the middle of something else. Uh, I don't even remember what it's called. I have so many of them. Okay, I think it's this one here. So once this comes up, I'll show you that you can basically choose any pi 
you like, any angle you like. Okay, it's taking a while to load. For some unknown reason. Ah, okay. So <clears throat> this here is pi divided by three. And if M is, uh, if, if M is, as we see here, 0 0.1, then N will be 0 0.098109. And you can actually take that M and this N and also pi over three and plug it into this equation, which is the calculus derivative. This, this equation that I give you right at the beginning. I just plug it into here and you'll see that this will give you the gradient at the point X, which as we see in this particular scenario is pi divided by three. And you can do that with any function. So uh, you can verify that there's always a parallel secant line to the tangent line and that you can always find the derivative. And so maybe what I'll do at a later stage is I'll give you some more examples with logarithmic functions and anything else if you are still uh, remaining unconvinced. But I doubt you'll be unconvinced if you try this yourselves. Um, it's pretty easy to do and there's really nothing to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and that I'll see you again next time uh, for another interesting uh, video. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.